From the smallest grain of sand to the largest star, everything in the universe is made of atoms. These tiny particles are the fundamental building blocks of matter, the Lego bricks of reality. Understanding the atom is key to unlocking the mysteries of the cosmos. It's a journey that takes us deep into the heart of matter, to a realm where the laws of classical physics break down and the strange world of quantum mechanics takes over. Our understanding of the atom has evolved over centuries, from the ancient Greeks' concept of indivisible particles to the sophisticated models we use today. Each step in this journey of discovery has brought us closer to understanding the universe and our place in it. It's a testament to the power of human curiosity and our relentless pursuit of knowledge. So let's embark on this fascinating adventure together. Let's delve into the atom, explore its structure and unravel the secrets it holds. Our journey begins with the pioneers who dared to imagine the invisible, the visionaries who laid the foundation for our modern understanding of the atom. In the early 19th century, a British chemist named John Dalton proposed a revolutionary theory that would forever change our understanding of matter. Dalton's Atomic Theory, published in 1808, was a watershed moment in the history of science. It marked the beginning of modern chemistry and paved the way for countless discoveries in the centuries that followed. Dalton's theory was based on a few simple but profound postulates. He proposed that all matter is made up of tiny, indivisible particles called atoms. He further suggested that atoms of a given element are identical in mass and properties, while atoms of different elements have different masses and properties. This was a radical departure from the prevailing wisdom of the time, which held that matter was continuous and infinitely divisible. Dalton's atomic theory provided a simple yet elegant explanation for the laws of chemical combination, which govern how elements combine to form compounds. His theory explained why elements always combine in fixed ratios by mass, a phenomenon that had puzzled scientists for centuries. Dalton's model, though rudimentary compared to our modern understanding, was a giant leap forward. It laid the groundwork for the development of modern chemistry and physics. While Dalton's atomic theory was a major breakthrough, it didn't tell the whole story. By the late 19th century, scientists were beginning to suspect that the atom was not, in fact, indivisible. Experiments with electricity and magnetism suggested that the atom might contain even smaller electrically charged particles. In 1897, British physicist J.J. Thompson provided the first experimental evidence for the existence of these subatomic particles. Through his work with cathode rays, beams of electrons emitted from a negatively charged electrode, Thompson discovered the electron. He demonstrated that these rays were composed of tiny negatively charged particles, much smaller than even the smallest atom. Thompson's discovery of the electron shattered the notion of the atom as an indivisible entity. He proposed a new model of the atom, often referred to as the plum pudding model. In this model, the atom was envisioned as a positively charged sphere embedded with negatively charged electrons, like plums scattered throughout a pudding. This model, though later superseded, was an important step towards our modern understanding of the atom. While Thomson's plum pudding model was a step in the right direction, it wasn't long before another groundbreaking experiment would revolutionize our understanding of the atom. In 1911, Ernest Rutherford, a New Zealand-born physicist working at the University of Manchester, conducted his now famous gold foil experiment. Rutherford's experiment involved firing a beam of alpha particles, positively charged particles emitted by radioactive materials, at a thin sheet of gold foil. Based on Thomson's model, Rutherford expected the alpha particles to pass through the foil with little or no deflection. To his astonishment, a small but significant fraction of the alpha particles were deflected at large angles, some even bouncing straight back. Rutherford's results were astounding. They could not be explained by Thomson's plum pudding model. To account for his observations, Rutherford proposed a radical new model of the atom. He suggested that the atom is mostly empty space, with its positive charge concentrated in a tiny, dense nucleus at its center. The electrons, he proposed, orbited the nucleus at a distance, much like planets orbiting the Sun. Rutherford's nuclear model was a major breakthrough, but it still had its limitations. 
It couldn't explain, for example, why atoms emit light at specific wavelengths or why electrons don't simply spiral into the nucleus. These puzzles would only be solved with the development of quantum mechanics, a revolutionary new theory of physics that emerged in the early 20th century. Quantum mechanics introduced the idea that energy, like matter, is quantized, meaning it exists in discrete packets called quanta. This had profound implications for our understanding of the atom. Danish physicist Niels Bohr, building on the work of Max Planck and Albert Einstein, proposed a model of the atom in which electrons could only occupy specific energy levels or orbits around the nucleus. Bohr's model successfully explained the emission spectra of atoms, but it was still incomplete. It wasn't until the development of quantum mechanics in the 1920s that a more complete and accurate picture of the atom emerged. The modern atomic model, based on the principles of quantum mechanics, describes electrons not as particles orbiting the nucleus in well-defined paths, but as waves of probability. These waves, described by mathematical equations called wave functions, determine the likelihood of finding an electron at a particular point in space. The modern atomic model is a testament to the power of human ingenuity and our ability to unravel the mysteries of the universe, even at the smallest of scales. Let's zoom in on the nucleus, the atom's dense core. Protons and neutrons, collectively called nucleons, reside here, bound together by the strong nuclear force, one of the most powerful forces in the universe. This force overcomes the electrostatic repulsion between the positively charged protons, keeping the nucleus from flying apart. Protons and neutrons have almost the same mass, roughly 1,836 times heavier than an electron. The mass of an atom is primarily concentrated in the nucleus due to these hefty particles. Understanding the properties of protons and neutrons is key to grasping concepts like nuclear fission and fusion, which power stars and some of our energy sources. Outside the nucleus, we enter the domain of electrons. These negatively charged particles are much lighter than protons and neutrons. They exist in a cloud-like region around the nucleus, constantly in motion. Imagine them as tiny race cars zipping around a track, never resting in one spot. The energy levels of electrons are quantized, meaning they can only occupy specific energy levels, much like climbing a staircase rather than a ramp. When an electron absorbs energy, it jumps to a higher energy level, when it drops back down, it releases energy in the form of light, giving us the vibrant colors we see in fireworks and neon signs. Venturing deeper into the subatomic world, we encounter quarks, the particles that make up protons and neutrons. These fundamental particles come in six different flavors, up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom. Protons and neutrons are each made of three quarks held together by the strong force. The world of quarks is governed by the laws of quantum mechanics, a realm where particles behave like waves and certainty gives way to probability. This strange and fascinating domain is still being explored by physicists, and its secrets hold the key to understanding the universe at its most fundamental level. Thanks for visiting Physics Around Us, and don't forget to subscribe.